Joy Drive with Dean Warren. Smart Fun Radio. Susie Wrong. Joy Drive with Dean Warren's film, TV, and theatre reviewer. Susie. I yes. Have got Is that the sound of guilt? A, well, you know what? I've got this feel. I, it's a really interesting um, thing that's happened because I have this feeling that, and I was thinking, where did it come from? And it's a feeling I used to get in uh, primary school when I hadn't done my homework. In <laughs> fact, I was in so much trouble once that I got told off and I got my mum to write me a note as to why I didn't do my homework. But unfortunately, this time she didn't write me a note that I didn't uh, watch Transhood. No, but I, I, I did actually... Uh, uh, call Susie earlier and give her a verbal note from Warren. Said, "Don't get too hard on the poor man. He's, he's shitting himself. He hasn't but listened to the film." T- tell us about it. It's Transhood. It's on binge now. What's it about? Transhood is an American documentary film that takes us on a five-year journey from the years 2014 to 2019, with four transgender children and their families. Phoenix is four years old, Avery is seven, Jay is 12, and Lena is 15. Most of the film is fairly predictable, with a particular and unsurprising focus on the struggles that these kids have to face. But as they go through early transition, both socially and medically, we find ourselves hopelessly riveted. Now, apologies for a spoiler coming up. Mm. One of the children goes through what is sometimes known as a detransition, and that for me was the most fascinating part of the film. Yeah. All these parents try their hardest to understand and to offer support, but we discover that there is no perfect way of being a model trans parent. What's a detransition? They sort of change their minds. Oh. So, yeah, this particular boy, and I think it was Avery, identified him themselves as a girl, identified female very strongly. That's right. Phoenix, yeah. Phoenix is at the age of three, four. three or four. Yeah. And then the family, like the really, really middle America parents were just like, oh, okay, we're going to have to change our whole world to, you know, basically support this kid. And then he, as soon as... She went to school, changed back again, and went, no, I'm total boy. Well, that coincided with a divorce. Yes, and the divorce. and But the father was the one, no, that seemed much more supportive of it. But the really interesting thing for me there, Warren and Susie, was that the mother completely changed and <laughs> she not only did she lose 20 kilos and god knows what was caused you know what caused that but they both both the parents look fitter and happier and healthier after the divorce but she's now uh said well you know th- this put me through the ringer i wish i'd just ignored him when he said he was a girl and not done that and she basically is just like it's all bullshit don't you know it was that was the most damaging part of the whole so movie. i hope it hasn't sent the wrong message to people that hey you shouldn't support your kids if they do want to transition no well that's one of four stories and the rest are sort of overwhelmingly supportive i think yeah, it's a documentary, and I think they, they try to be on the side of, um, you know, uh, of the truth of it uh, while showing this sort of slightly unusual scenario. And, you know, I loved it because I often think about, you know, people who detransition because we don't hear about them very much. No. And when we do hear about them, it always feels like something sort of quite abhorrent has happened. And you know what? When I was looking at this little boy, Phoenix, and, and, and when that story about the parents' divorce happened and how uh, they decided, right, you, uh, I'm actually a boy, you know, I, I was wrong. It reminded me so much of when I was growing up and how as a child, you know, as a sensitive child, and I think most children are sensitive, you are so conscious of not just how the world looks, but your effect on the world, you know. And if every day you're looking at your parents' hearts breaking a little bit more and they're, and they're fighting every day over you, it, it only makes sense that, they, that the child would say, you know what, I was kidding. Yeah. And, mm. and then you suppress that for 20 years, 30 years, and then maybe it'll come back again. And he, he flipped back so hard that he went straight into camo clothing and was carrying around guns and, uh, and bows and arrows. Like he became yeah. a hyper boy. It was sort of, <laughs> it was really weird. But I found the character Lena to me quite conflicting because I thought, well, she epitomises that generation, or I, I imagine, that in my mind, that generation of young, ambitious, take, 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 teenagers like it just seemed to me that her parents are these lovely and supportive and she wants the medical intervention and they're like Ugh. so it's all they're sort of trying to help her along but they're saying can you just hold off we'll put you on puberty blockers but can you just hold off we don't want to do the bottom surgery until we're absolutely certain and 
but she's just pushing and pushing and pushing for it, which is like, I think it's life-saving for her. But I I felt a lot more, I identified a lot more with the parents in this situation and just how they're trying to be supportive, but they're trying to leave the door open for her to detransition or to just lead a different way, go a different way in life. What was your take on that, Susie? Yeah, it is a challenging one because when we see her, she's 15 and she's trying to be a model. Mm. And, you know, I am... Oh, I'm mostly very liberal, I guess, but it, when I'm looking at a 15-year-old girl, you know, r- getting on the runway in in a bikini, I, I just get those feelings of like, oh, I'm not sure if I like that very much. Be- and, because she's trans or just generally? No, just generally. Mm. Just generally of, of just sort of putting sexualized images of girls, you know, and... And uh, in, even in that way, the, the parent, the parent, her, her parents were trying so hard to be supportive, bringing her to model agents and all that. And I think, <clears throat> good on them. And and you know, even though it sort of challenges me emotionally, I just feel like, well, what's the worst that could happen? Mm. Like, well, what are you so? What am I so afraid of happening? And really, I, I'm just being a little bit. Uh, over a bit paranoid, a bit overprotective, maybe. Susie, um, you said that the, it, you know, it documented the struggles that these kids have. How did you feel when you were watching the the kids? Um, how, you know, how did you react? Well, I, I I was just very absorbed by the stories. I think it took me a while. Like when I'm watching it, I don't sort of relate it to relate it personally very much. I'm watching these four people's stories it's only after watching it and i'm digesting it then i think oh even though i didn't tran- transition at that age uh those feelings were uh, very similar and but because i i grew up at that age in a very you know conservative society in singapore and you know with sort of old-fashioned parents who definitely didn't understand were never going to be supportive i understood right that's exactly how things get suppressed for my generation, especially mm. if you're from Asia, for years and years and years. Because, you know, you, you watch it and think, wow, they're so lucky they're transitioning so early. It's a completely different world. And then you think, all oh, right, it was a completely different world. That, that's why you, 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 weren't, you weren't able to transition for so many years. Did you feel, um, last, what did we review last week? We watched, um, I forgot. Generation. Name, generation. And one of the feelings I got when I was watching that was, oh, well, the, you know, we had that, that um, very flamboyant kid being embraced and being a sporty hero and I thought uh, watching that oh I'm really pleased the way the school environment has changed did you get that feeling watching uh, transition that that things have changed for the better yeah definitely uh, and I did when I watch things like that I always think about you know the 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 things that we did in terms of activism in the 90s especially and then you know in the early noughties you know we were trying so hard to get laws changed and to get people's um people's sort of opinions changed about the lgbtqia community and then we've had so much success and that's what happens you know like you were saying earlier that that young people kind of don't look for gay bars because a bar is a bar yeah. and that is precisely what we were trying to do all those years and it sort of has gone so far and you know parts of us are still stuck in the past where we still feel you know th- the same old feelings when we were children of being persecuted but at the same time we can see we can see that the the all the evidence everywhere that the world has changed so much um you know from our insistence we are speaking to our great mate and film reviewer Susie Rong out of Sydney about the documentary movie Trans Hood. It's streaming currently on Binge in Australia. Which I haven't watched, but I will go and watch. I have a naughty boy today. Um, uh, Susie, <laughs> well, you the, the, the detransition, um, how does the uh, trans community uh, react to Ooh, that? Are they question. supportive or do they look and go, well, you know, you're no longer one of us? What are they like? I think there is um, an increasing attitude of um, em- embrace. You know, you know how it used to be that there were terms like transsexual, transvestite, etc. Now it's a, a term called transgender. I think which reflects a, a more encompassing attitude and to understand that everyone has a very, very different journey through this. You know, this difficulty with gender, I would say. And I think part of that is understanding that people are just not going to experience it the same way as you are and people are not going to make the same choices as you do even though you might identify with similar labels and I think that is incredibly healthy and that would include people who decide you know that maybe I need to take a step back maybe I need to uh, do a drastic uh, U-turn and you know that's the way 
people are. And I think if you want to expect people to be accepting of gender variance, you know, then you have to be accepting of gender variance. Mm. Exactly. The thing, one of the things I really liked about this uh, documentary movie, Trans Hood, was that, I mean, three of the characters, three of the actual people, uh, transitioning male to female, although one transitions back, but Jay is a young um, trans boy who's a very complicated um, life and it made me, it it made me think just how different the situation is in America in terms of the financing the funding of uh, gender reaffirmation surgery but he and even just the getting of hormones but it, that was a very particular what was your thinking thinking of the point where Jay's mother marries another woman ostensibly I mean sure there's love there but they basically rush it through so that they can get Jay the hormone treatment and surgery that he needs it's sort of kind of messed up. Why do you think it's messed up? I just thought that was a really interesting thing to put on the documentary. And it just sort of, I was like, wow, is it, so, I mean, it just became like, we have to do this so that he can get, I mean, I guess you would do that if your boy needs that, that medical intervention. But it seems like such a complicated uh, thing in America that to get this stuff funded. And so much of what these kids were doing were constantly requiring money for surgeries. And I don't know, it just seems like a strange time of life to yeah. have all these big worries but I know that they've got them because they're in the wrong body I think that's an that's a really big discussion you know medical transition because mm. I I have probably had uh, less medical transition than other any other trans person that I know you know mm. and and but that's a combination of all kinds of reasons I think mainly for me it's because that I've had to suppress things for so many years mm. and in that process of it I have learned like many many women and some men to just accept the body that they're in yep. uh, and but that's easier said than done I think and especially to a child because you know the the changes that are gonna that are forthcoming for prepubescent children they are so scary and it's easy for me to say you know you know, a woman can look like anything. A woman can have anything she wants between her legs. You don't have to conform in it all these ways. It's easy for me to say. But, you know, the conditions are so different. And if they have such different possibilities now in terms of what's available to them medically and what's available to them, um, you know, uh, in terms of uh, the money from insurance and government, I don't know. It's so complicated. Mm -hmm. And in the documentary, you can see how complicated it is. And and then, you know, the parents just do the best that they can. And But, you know, we have this worry about, right, if, is this going to be the wrong thing that they've done? And then I'm thinking, well, look, if it's wrong, then you fix it when it, when it needs to be fixed. It can always be fixed. I don't think. Can you stick one back on? I don't think you can. Well, I don't know why you can't. I mean, medicine keeps changing. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's a one-way street. So I really do. It's, called, it's a really interesting chat, it and is. it's great hearing your uh, personal insight on it as well. It's called Transition. No, it's called Transhood. Uh, Transhood, sorry. It's on Binge uh, right now, so you can stream it. Susie, what are we going to do for next week? And I promise you, I will do my ho homework. <laughs> next week's movie was chosen especially for you, Warren. Oh, what is it? It's a very itchy film. <laughs> <laughs> it's called I Care A Lot. Aww. It is on... Amazon Prime Video starring Rosamund Pike, Diane Weiss and Peter Dinklage. Amazing actors. Do you know what? Prime, <laughs> mate, you've already got me on four streaming services. I know, I'm, I'm coming. Just, I I'm, come not my take, I'm not doing another one. Amazon. You're going to have to send me a link. So I care a lot, Amazon Prime. Yeah, uh, it's about hateful characters, all of oh, them. Oh, great. Oh, is that why you want me to watch it? Because I know you don't have the stomach for it. I just want to see how you're going to react. Okay, okay. I, already <laughs> I already love the fact that they've put Peter Dinklage in a role as a hateful character. That's going to take some guts. So I can't He wait is to phenomenal. Yeah, he he's is a great phenomenal. actor. Yeah, and sexy like no one's business. So oh, next we next week is I Care A Lot. It's on Amazon Prime. Yes. Fantastic. You're amazing. Thanks so much, Susie Rong. <laughs> see you see next, you next Tuesday. Tuesday. See you, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Blake with girlfriend. Joy drive.